Welcome to month one of the Vortex block of the month from Legit Kits. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. We'll do a sew along with each kit so you'll have lots of support along the way. You do not need any special tools for this. So this is great if you're a beginner or even if you've never tried foundation paper piecing before. Let me show you what you need to get started. Then I'm going to show you how I cut out my fabric. You do not need to be precise or exact or accurate or even pretty. We're just going to cut rough and loosely and then get to sewing and I'll share some tips during sewing to show you how to get precise angles and points without a lot of work. Let's get started. I take a no-nonsense approach to foundation paper piecing, so your supplies are minimal. You'll need your sewing machine, and I use neutral light-colored thread, so white or cream. The block we're making this month is mostly green, so if you wanted to use a light green, that would be fine too, but something really light in color. I use a 30 or 50 weight, either of those is fine, and a cotton, but that's really a personal preference. Whatever you have on hand is okay to use. You'll also need a good pair of scissors. You will need some pins, and I recommend a pair of tweezers with a sharp point on them. You'll see why these are important later. Oh, and you'll need an iron. Otherwise, you don't need anything else. You can use a rotary cutter if you have one on hand, and we'll talk about that later. So let's get started cutting. So we've got four blocks to make for month one. Only one of them needs assembling. One seam, that's easy. The rest of them are full pages. There's a couple different ways you can work on this. You can either go to the cut guides first and pull the pattern needed and cut that out and then move to the next one. You can use the patterns and just cut one, two, three, four and do a page at a time or you can cut them all out at once. It's completely out, up to you whichever way works best for you and whichever way your brain wants to do it. Because sometimes we just have to listen to what our brain wants to do. For me, sometimes it's satisfying just to start from the top of the pile and work from the top of the pile. But I'm going to show you how I cut my fabric roughly and loosely and it does not have to be perfect. Let's start with this B-I bright idea. I'm gonna pull B1B here. I'll trim the extra paper off, but that doesn't have to be precise either. And then all I'm going to do is put my pattern on top of my fabric. Make sure all of my seam allowances have fabric around them. So this sewing line is on the edge, but I'm making sure that my pattern goes past the seam allowance at least a quarter inch. Doesn't have to be exact. And then I'll just cut roughly around that shape. And that's all you have to do. Again, you'll have lots of fabric because, for instance, in this piece, this is the only piece cut from this fabric. That's it. Once we have that piece cut from that fabric, we're done with BI. I'm going to put that aside. And then I think I'll just work through my pile. So I have HR. I'm going to cut my seam allowance. Nope. I'm going to cut my selvage off. Just get that out of the way. I'll find the HR cut guide here. I have three pieces to cut. So I'm actually going to start with this largest one here. Number three is B2 here. So again, I'll just put the paper over the fabric. Make sure I have lots of room around all sides of the pattern. Quick little pin so it doesn't shift on me. And cut around that space roughly. You do not have to make precise cuts. And then the next one we do, we can either do one or two. I'm just gonna do one A2. Down here in the corner. And I like to take advantage of right angles. So if I have a right angle on the pattern, I'll just put it in a right angle of the fabric. And that actually fits pretty well. Might do it like this instead though. Now, you can either lift the paper up and cut under it, but you could also fold it over right on that sewing line and just crease it. And then I've made myself a nice little guide to cut. There we 
we go. I'll pin this on there for now so I don't forget what it is. Set it aside. The last piece I need to cut is B1A. And I've got lots of leftovers, so I'm just going to find a place that fits nicely. Put the tag back on the leftovers, set these aside. Next one in my stack is QR Ferndale. Cut the selvage off. Okay, I've just got two pieces to cut. So number one is A1, one, and that fits really nicely just in that corner. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the fabric to the back of the paper really securely because this is number one. And then when I go to sew, I don't have to pin it any further. I can just sew. Cut roughly. Set that aside, and then I need A22, which is this little corner up here. And that fits nicely there. And QR is done. Now we have CK Cactus. So two pieces to cut. I'm gonna do one first. It really doesn't matter too much, I don't think, because we've got a big piece of fabric here, but let's do B1, B1. Oh, that's actually a relatively small piece. I was expecting it to be a lot bigger. You can, on these light colored fabrics, Put the fabric on top and see your pattern that way. And then I'm still going to, let's see, I'm just gonna cut a little bit here and then I'm going to fold back right on that sewing line just to give myself a reference. And then I'll trim this side and cut on the other side of that crease. And this is number one, so I'll pin it to the back of my pattern. Just set it aside. And then number two is B2, one. And let's find a nice place for this to fit. Actually, it fits kind of nicely. Let's take two off now. It fits kind of nicely right in there. And then we still have this whole piece left. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Set the leftovers aside. Double check. I've got a cut there, but I've got lots of room. I'm good. I'm going to leave that. Put two back so I don't forget it. And then we have Key Lime. Find my cut guide. There we are. Okay, we've got a couple pieces to cut from this. Let's do one, two, three is fine first. So we'll start A1, three. And I'm just gonna do right down here. And then we have A2, 3. And I like using this opposing angle. So what we cut off last time went one way and this angle goes the other way and they fit pretty nicely in there together. And then I will fold the 
this back and just curl around it. And then we have B1A1. I'll just pin this to the back of it because it's our piece number one. Number two, I'm going to take off and I'll go ahead and just stick it on this pin because this one's ready to sew. I'm going to set it aside, but it's all ready to go. That was B1A1, B1B3 is small. I'm gonna skip that. And five is also small. Let's go to six, B2, four, just to make sure. And this is gonna fit. Might be a little tight, but it fits. Go ahead and cut this off. I don't need that. And then this time I am going to put it on top to make sure I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, we've got lots of room there. So we're okay on that. The sewing line is right there. So I'll leave that. That is piece four. I'll pin it here. And then we'll go back to four and five. So B1, B3 is here. And B2, oh, B2 had another piece on it up here. So those are both really small pieces. So we're good on room. So I think I'll do this one first because it's the right angle. I could put it here, but I think I'm just going to take advantage of that little corner there. That still leaves lots of room for this one. So yeah, let's just do that. And then this one goes nicely right there. I don't have much left of this one, but it worked out. Now this one has one, two, three cut. I'm gonna take number two, put it on top of number three, put them all on the back. So they're in numerical order, one, two, three. So when I go to sew, I'll just take two and three off and I know they're already in order. And then all we have left is sour apple. And it's just two pieces. So let's start with number two, A2, two. here. And this one's another generous piece. So I think we'll just cut right around that. Does not have to be exact. And that's number one. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it to the back of the pattern. Make sure it's in good position. This one has all its pieces cut, so we'll set it aside. And then we just have to cut a two, nope, I'm on the wrong one. A two, this one is cut already, so a one, two, which is here. Let's see, oh, my, my brain really wants to put it in that space but I don't think it's quite, actually. I could make it work, but it's pretty tight right here in this dip, so I won't worry about it. I'll just bring it over here and let's do this corner, this edge here, I like that. So this time I've made sure that the pattern piece is covered. I don't see any of the seam allowances. And I'm just going to fold the paper back right on that sewing line. And cut outside that fold line. 
Here's that tag. And then I'll come up the side of that pattern there. And then two and three can go in order on the back. I've got all of my pieces cut for month one. Two, three, and four will go right on the back. So I just know that they're in order. So let's go sew these. You can sew these in any order. It really doesn't matter which one you start with. I'll go ahead and start with A1, but the same technique applies to all of them. With A1, we have three colors to sew. And we're gonna go in numerical order. This is true for all foundation paper piecing. You just follow the number on the paper and you sew right on the line. Now, numbers two and three are cut, but we don't need them immediately. So I'm gonna take them off the pattern, but I do have them in numerical order, so I'll set them aside. Number one, is pinned to the back of the paper, to the back of the pattern. And your number one will always be on the back of the paper. It's the only one that gets pinned to the back of the paper without being attached to anything else. So number one always goes on the back of the paper. Number two will go right sides together with one. So when you're sewing it, they'll look like this, right sides together. This is your seam line right here, but the paper shows you where to sew. Now to make sure that we get our number two fabric in the right position, we're gonna start with it on top of where it's going to end up. This is where it will be. So if we finish an iron and trim, trim and iron, this is where it will end up with the seam hiding. But to make sure that our alignment is correct, we're gonna start with it on top of the pattern. Make sure that all of our seam allowances are covered I have lots of room on every side of my seam allowance. And then all I'm going to do is fold back right on that sewing line. Give it a good crease. You don't wanna stretch it because this is a bias line. This is a diagonal line. So you don't wanna stretch your fabric too much, but you can give it a good crease in a couple places. And then I'm also gonna give myself an extra registration mark. So I'm gonna fold it back right at the intersection of the seam allowance and the sewing line here. And you can do the same thing down here. Now, I'm going to flip this directly to the right. Your lower number will always be to the left and your higher number will always be to the right. So now I have a crease line and some registration marks that I will just put my fabric, my pattern, right on top of. The sewing line goes right on the crease. The intersection goes right at that registration mark at the top and the bottom. You can pin these if you need to. I'm right here at my sewing machine, but if you're picking them up to put them on a higher <laughs> throw, you might want to pin them so nothing shifts. But I'm just going to take it straight to the machine and sew right on that line. Their stitch length is a little small. I use about a 1.5. So we sewed right on the paper on the line. I start before the seam allowance and end after it. And this does not have to be exact. It doesn't matter where you bring it and end just as long as it's outside the seam allowance. Now, don't take these initial pins out yet because I have a trick to show you so you don't get confused on which side you need to trim. But leave the pins in now. And we're going to trim our seam allowance. I just use scissors. You do not need special tools and you can use a rotary cutter if you want, but you don't have to. So I'm just going to trim this seam allowance. I'm not cutting my paper, I'm only cutting the fabric. And by leaving the pins in over here, you know you're not gonna cut over here. So if you accidentally get confused and start trying to trim over here, this pin prevents you from getting under both layers of fabric. So that's not the side you wanna trim. You wanna side, trim the side where the both layers of fabric are free. 
and it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just needs to be around a quarter inch. Now we're going to iron that seam. Now you can take the pins out so we don't iron on top of our pins. And set your seam. Now we say set our seam, but I think a lot of times we don't understand what it means, but essentially you're softening this fabric so that when you do open that seam out and press it, you've softened it and allows it to have a more accurate press. So you really wanna make sure that you roll the fabric onto that sewing line. You don't wanna crease, you don't wanna iron any extra creases into that seam. So really roll your fabric against that stitching. Give it a good press and we'll do piece number three. So piece number three, we'll start with it on top. And this one's pretty easy. I'm not even going to press this or crease it because I know that even if I start with the fabric all the way down here on the seam allowance, my piece is still covered. If I bring it all the way up here, I might have a little bit showing down here. So I just know as long as I kind of start with it with the fabric, the paper up towards the top of the fabric, I'm good to go. I'm going to flip this to the right. Put the paper on top of it. And I've got about a quarter inch over here past that sewing line. This time, we have a, the previous seam, we intersected it. So we're just gonna, when we pull our paper away, we're just gonna unzip until we get back to the stitching of this seam. Scissors under the fabric. Roughly a quarter inch. And press it again. Now that's the first block done. A1 is done and you can set it aside. I do not trim on the seam allowance. You are welcome to, but I do not. I'll show you later how I assemble without trimming. Okay, let's just do B1 since it's next on the pile. This is piece number two. And again, if I put my fabric on top of my pattern, I just know that if I pull it all the way up to the top, it's still gonna be covered. If I pull it down here, it technically works. So as long as I get it, you know, either centered or towards the bottom, it'll work no matter where. I'm gonna let the iron sit on this one while I'm sewing the next one. And then B1B, number one is pinned to the back already because we did that while we were cutting. And then I will just add the last piece here. And then we'll assemble the B. We're going to unzip that seam. So B1B and B1A need to be assembled. 
and we'll refer to our assembly guide just to make sure we're doing it correctly. This is the diagram and these are the written instructions and there's just one seam, A on top of B. And I'll show you how I assemble without trimming my sections. These two go together and they will end up right sides together so we can sew right on that sewing line. I'm gonna use the pin and point method. So I'm gonna put a pin right in the intersection where the two sewing lines meet. And then I'll come up the corresponding intersection. And I'll do the same thing at the other end. Now your pins should be straight up and down. And I'll add a pin here just to make sure that if my pin is on the sewing line here, it should be on the sewing line on the back. Take that first pin out. Now, you sewed right on the line on the front and it's also right on the line on the back. We're gonna go ahead and take our papers off the seam allowances. This will make pressing a lot easier. And this is where your tweezers will come in handy because we have a little piece of paper right there. And I'm also going to remove the tip of that paper. It's a pretty sharp angle. And if we press that seam, it'll kind of get covered by the paper. So just by removing it, it makes it easier to tear the rest of the paper out later. Those short stitches make it easy to tear your paper off. Same thing here. I'm going to get the little sharp points out of the seam allowance and go ahead and remove the paper from the tips of the triangles. Okay. Now this seam allowance I'm going to trim about a quarter inch, does not have to be exact. And I'll press this. Now, sometimes I like to press open, but in this case, this block has two seams coming here and this one only has one. So I'm actually going to press this way because that's just gonna make it behave better. That's the way it wants to go. We're gonna let it do what it wants. and that's B1 done. And we'll do our other two blocks in the same way. I forgot to put these on the back of my block. The lower number is always to the left, the higher number is always to the right. So I'm gonna put this on top here and see how it fits. Yeah.
and our last block. Now this one I didn't pin number one to it. So number one goes on the back of the block. Make sure your seam allowances are covered. I've got a cut right here. So I'm just making sure my sewing line doesn't hit that. Number two. Number four, I will crease because it's such a funny shape. And then with the lower number left and the higher number right, I will just flip this over to the right and put the pattern right on that crease line. those with the scraps. All right, so after ironing that, I'll trim a little excess off here. We have all of our blocks done. Now we'll refer to our diagram to know how to put them together. So this is the pattern side of the diagram. And it's a 1A2, B1, B2. So we're gonna start with A1 and A2. Now I don't trim my blocks, just like I don't trim my sections before assembling. I'm gonna do the pin and point for these two. Right at the top corner. And then at the bottom corner. And then I'll put a pin on that line, double check it. And then I'll put another pin down here, just to make sure everything's lined up nicely. And then I will put a pin right in this intersection. Make sure that it's hitting that intersection on the front and the back. back stitch but you can if you want to right at the beginning and end we'll take our paper out of our seam allowances Now this one I will press open. So 
So I'm going to use my fingernail and run along that seam and really feel to make sure that that seam is open and there's no creases or pleats in it. And there is A1 and A2 assembled. We'll set that aside and do B1 and B2. If you come to an intersection like this and the paper is underneath it and there's a chance your foot will get caught on this paper, just pull that paper to the top, put it over the fabric. Looks good. Okay, so we only have one seam left for this month. And that's to join A1 and A2 to B1 and B2. I'll press this open. And now we'll join a1 and A2 to B1 and B2 in the same way. Just a little larger scale. And then I will check my center seam to make sure that lines up nicely. That's good. Make sure the seam on the bottom doesn't get caught on your sewing machine. Pull this paper to the top. With that, month one is done. Your four blocks are completed and look where it goes in the quilt, in the upper corner. Revel in your success, you did good.
So I'll be here again next month to work on month number two. I'll have more tips and tricks and we'll have some problem solving along the way. So if you make a mistake, I'll show you how to fix it. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe. I really appreciate your support. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments or you can message me through Instagram, email, Facebook, or even here on YouTube. Thanks so much. I'll see you next month.